documentary highlights healthy habits of Adventists in Loma Linda, one of the longest living communities on earth. Hybrid evangelism promotes thousands of opportunities to talk about Christ. First Museum on the History of the Adventist Church and Resource Center opens in Haiti. Sabbath Gift reaches 1.4 million views in the South Pacific region. These and other news are coming up on ANN. Representatives from the Communications Department of the Adventist World Headquarters were in Brazil for meetings and visits to institutions and evangelistic projects. Part of the pastoral care and digital evangelism team at the Adventist World Headquarters witnessed the results of hybrid evangelistic work at the Moema Adventist Church in Sao Paulo, the largest city in the country. I won't have time to introduce everyone individually, but quickly, I want to show you. Samuel Neves is the Associate Director of Communication for the World Church. Alisa Truman, who doesn't understand anything, but she understands quite a bit of Spanish and is getting smarter in Portuguese. She is the Assistant Director and responsible for social media. I have Jeff Nascimento, who is the coordinator of the HERO project. Daniel Bogdanov is Russian. He is an assistant in the communication department and deals with technology, internet, connection, all that stuff. There is Behota, who coordinates all the social media work in the Portuguese language. Then there is Jao Silva, who is a project manager. And there is Arnaldo Oliveira, who is the coordinator of several projects within the church. And just starting out, we have Jonatas. So they came here for a conference in which we discussed how to do more. In March of this year, a prototype was launched in Moema as part of the Adventist Church's worldwide initiative for digital evangelism. Accompanied by the Adventist Church headquarters in South America and local fields, the digital evangelism team used social media to offer prayers and provide spiritual and emotional support. Closer bonds were established through chat apps and the opportunity to participate in physical services was offered, resulting in baptism and engagement in the church's mission. I want to send a hug to you, Daniele, there in Canada. We are here bursting with joy because in a few moments your mother will be baptized in the waters. May you and Luca walk in the fear of the Lord. And I hope that soon you too will make this decision alongside Jesus, sending you a big hug and may God bless you. Let's watch the baptism now. Look, Rosemary, what a beautiful church celebrating the birth of a new life in Christ Jesus. And look at the whole team involved in the salvation of souls, of people, so that they may give their lives to Christ Jesus. Rosemary, it is with great joy that I, as a minister of the gospel, baptize you for the forgiveness of your sins and the birth of a new life in Christ Jesus in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Look at that celebration, Rosemary. Give me a hug. May God bless you very much. Since its launch, there have been more than 4,000 conversations, 107 visits to the church, and seven baptisms. The success of the project has made the church adjust to the needs of the digital community that seeks to know more about Jesus. It changed the way I see this project now. Um, because of I saw baptism and the results, now when I receive a request or I have some technical task related to this project, I treat it differently. I take it more serious. I try to do it quicker and better because I saw these results. So I believe everyone in our team should experience that and it helps them to take it, if you will, personally. It changes a lot. It's, it was very important for me. Seeing the in-person results of our digital work was very special. It was incredible for me and our entire team. 
It just shows that we are on the right path, and God wants to bring many of the people we have encountered online to real salvation. A new miniseries from the streaming platform Netflix presents the habits of the longest living people in the world in four episodes. The documentary Live to 100, Secrets of the Blue Zones is based on the book The Blue Zone, Nine Lessons of Living Longer from the People Who've Lived the Longest, written by journalist Dan Buettner. Buettner revisits the five blue zones resulting from research spanning more than two decades. These regions are Okinawa, Japan, Sardinia, Italy, Ikaria, Greece, Nicoya, Costa Rica, and Loma Linda, United States, where a large Adventist community is located. In episode two, the production highlights four aspects of the longevity of Adventists, volunteering, plant-based diet, faith, and the right tribe. Live to 100, Secrets of the Blue Zones also highlights the importance of sabbatical rest, having an active life, and of not only abandoning harmful foods such as sugar, meat, and bad fats, but adding good foods such as fruits, nuts, whole grains, and beans. What began in a theology class at the Haiti Adventist University became the country's first museum on the history of the Adventist Church and Resource Center in Carrefour, Port-au-Prince. For several months, dozens of theology students researched and gathered artifacts, photos, drawings, and documents for the museum. The project's launch was unveiled on campus as the Adventist Church in Haiti celebrated its 118th anniversary. Church leaders, educators, and students gathered for the opening ceremony. The museum hall was named Emmanuel Clement Benoit in honor of Pastor Emmanuel Benoit for his 50 years in pastoral ministry in Haiti. Benoit is currently the president of the South Haiti Mission. In partnership with the Communication Department of the Adventist World Headquarters, theologians Frank Hazel and Keldy Poroshki interview Adventist leaders to address each of the 28 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In a recent interview, Laszlo Galus, senior lecturer in New Testament studies, talks about the 16th Adventist belief, the Lord's Supper. All Christian churches celebrate the Lord's Supper in one way or another. So my question to you would be, what is the significance, what is the meaning of the Lord's Supper for Christians and for Seventh-day Adventists in particular? First of all, greetings to all who are watching this program. And thank you, Frank, for invitation to be with you in this program. I think this is a very, very important topic. And when we talk about the Lord's Supper, we shall relate it to baptism. Baptism is kind of initiation right in Christianity. If you decide to follow Jesus, if you decide to spend eternity with him, you will request to be baptized, and through baptism, you are establishing a covenant with God. So covenant is, is the foundation of, of, of the relationship with, with, with God. And uh, the baptism is the first yes. The Lord's Supper is actually a time when we maintain that covenant, time when we confirm our yes. And it is a very vital part of Christian life. So we can say that um, the Lord's Supper continues what baptism began in our faith journey. We, con we confirm our decision. We pledge allegiance. We, we pledge uh, that we will follow that we will follow Jesus and express our devotion devotion to Him. Uh, this is very interesting uh, what you say, Laszlo. So the Lord's Supper is not just to be understood in isolation. To watch this and other videos, visit the official page of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on YouTube. More than 1.4 million people have viewed positive messages about the Sabbath as part of an innovative social media campaign launched in the South Pacific region. The Sabbath Gift Initiative has been designed to draw attention to the benefits of the Sabbath as a time of rest and restoration, community, and connection in today's stressful, fast-paced, and isolated world. And most importantly, to share that the Sabbath is a gift from a loving God. The initiative encourages Adventists from across the South Pacific to create and share a simple video clip on their platforms, highlighting their personal connection and experience with the Sabbath. Friday night is a special time for our family. We all come together as we are, exhausted from our week, 
and let go of our burdens. Around the dinner table, sharing a meal, connecting and catching up on everyone's highlights from the week. We sit together and light candles to open up the Sabbath as the sun goes down. We share what we are grateful for and talk about the Sabbath and why it is important for each of us. Then we spend time in prayer together. This is our Sabbath. Caleb Mission is a volunteer project supported by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, where young people dedicate their vacation time to evangelism and service to the community. One of the beneficiaries of this project was Ghislaine Ribeiro Paz. For 21 days, volunteers from Caleb Mission renovated her house, which had been deteriorated for several years. The story takes place in the city of Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's been over 25 years that we've been here, almost 30 years. But due to the circumstances of life, I was estranged from the church at the time, right? There was no church here when we came. So I started dating, got involved during the relationship, became pregnant. And the solution my father found was to build a room upstairs. But it wasn't his intention for me to stay here. And so time went by, time passed, there was a separation. My ex-husband left my life. And I was alone with my three-year-old daughter and my seven to eight-year-old son. I started working as a house cleaner, was already committed to the church, and I had no resources, no means, no conditions, alone raising two children to make this what it is now. I lived in a single room for 20 years with a poorly finished hallway, no door, no window, just a sink, refrigerator and stove. It's been about three to four years that I started saying, Lord, I want to have my own house. I want to have a room for my son, a room for my daughter, a living room to receive people. I don't have space. I don't have a place for people to sit. Every time we had guests, it was downstairs at my mother's house where we stayed. And then I said, Lord, if you don't renovate our house, it will collapse. And we have never been able to make any improvements here. During the Holy Communion, Pastor Fabricio made a request. He said, you can make a request now, and the request you make, God will fulfill. I prayed to God and said, Lord, I want my house to be renovated. When I went that same day, I made this second request at the Holy Communion. In the afternoon when the Caleb team did the opening of Adventist Youth, JA, my brother-in-law Anderson Mariano Zine and Marcelo called me downstairs. They said, we need to talk to you. I was shocked and I thought, oh dear, did something happen? What did we do wrong? So I rushed downstairs with them. They sat across from us and said, we need to discuss something serious with you. The Caleb's have very important projects to carry out with the community, and one of these projects is a home renovation. After analyzing, discussing and praying, talking to God, your home came to our minds. God answered the prayer on the same day I took the cup. Every day I kept saying, Lord, thank you so, so much. Well, we have known Giza for quite some time, right? We know about her difficulties, and when the project came up with the idea of renovating a house, we decided to choose her due to her dedication to the church. She's someone who truly works for God. So when the project gave us the opportunity to renovate a house, she was the first person who came to my mind. So we assembled a team and put the Caleb youth to work so they could develop their skills. We can even say that some of them became quite skilled in construction. These were young people who didn't even know how to handle a trowel, and they were plastering walls. Their effort was so great that sometimes, in the morning when we were heading to the construction site, I didn't have to call them. They volunteered, saying, I want to go. 
But I feel that this was truly the work of Satan to try to stop the project, because the young people started with a lot of enthusiasm. It was tough, because our ribs still hurt to this day, and it takes time for them to heal. But we managed to complete the project in the end. What I think the mission that Claudia helped me with the most was to develop a greater love for people. I realized that love is lacking in the world, and when we take this kind of action, we can renew that love. For me, communion with God used to be just about being in church, being in the club, or being at Caleb Mission. And today, no, communion with God is me kneeling down every day and crying out to the God I serve. I think this mission, this project was very important. And it was very good for us because we could see that God really fulfills his promises in our lives so that we can help others. And it renewed my faith in God. And I think it did for everyone as well. When I come in here, I still feel like it's not really my home because I had the house in one way and now it's different. Now I have the mission of furnishing it. But I said, Lord, it's much more than I could have ever deserved. I can only thank you, and in heaven I want to thank you in person for everything you've given me. Thank you. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Malaysia concluded the Hope for Malaysia Evangelism Initiative with over 1,600 baptisms. A second evangelism campaign will be held in November due to people's interest in hearing more about Jesus. The week-long evangelistic campaign started in major cities such as Kuala Lumpur, Kuching, and Kota Kinabalu. The meetings took place simultaneously at over 25 locations all across the country. Hope for Malaysia is intended to promote revival in united worship whilst revealing an impactful initiative on the urgency of urban missions. The president of the Adventist Church in Malaysia, Abel Bana, remarked that it was heartening to see the first nationwide movement of the Adventist Church in the country. He rejoiced, this is a major achievement for Malaysia. And now we are going to Florida in the United States to learn about Advent Health News with reporter Tom Johnson. Advent Health has received many accolades from outside the walls of the organization, praising the quality of care we provide to our patients. The awards are typically presented by big companies giving us big recognition. But one recent award comes to us from an unlikely and we think inspirational presenter. Videographer David Maddox shows you. Today was just such a, a privilege because I had uh, just a, an amazing patient come back who's 87. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much. I wanted to come in here today to do something special. I would like to give you, this is the finisher medal. Oh, really? It's Advent Health. I had planned this for seven months to come back to see my doctor, Kevin Acula, and give him the medal that I received from running the Celebration Half Marathon, January the 29th. When she reached her out, arms out and put this around my neck. So if my you will goodness. accept it. My heart jumped, it was a touching moment because anytime we see a patient come back after surgery, and particularly major surgery, like she had two valves done, is always so endearing to the entire team. It gives them their giddy up in the morning and it gets them up early and gets them there. Their enthusiasm level all goes up. You're amazing. My life has changed. I wouldn't be here today without those nurses, without the people who were a part of my hospital experience as well as continuing the hospital experience. This means so much. They uh, are inspired by her and with her, not only outlook, but her enthusiasm to not only run another mile, but live another day. When I grow up, I definitely want to be like her. About a third of Latvia's population lives in Riga, the capital city. Here, Adventists are not afraid to try creative approaches to ministry. Evangelism initiatives include a book house with free literature and a health food store. Thanks to the presence of the Adventist Church in many forms, people have discovered a sense of community and healing. On the street outside an Adventist church in Riga, Latvia, pedestrians often stop by a book house alongside the walkway. This small house contains a variety of free literature, 
Armands, who's once pastored this church and is now retired, makes sure that inventory stays stocked for local residents to enjoy. About a third of Latvia's population lives here in the capital city. The historical center is a UNESCO World Heritage Site noted for its architecture. In Riga, Adventists aren't afraid to try creative approaches to ministry, such as their book house. Valdis is a church member who uses his health food store as a place of connection with his community. Our goal for, uh, for Daba Stacia, that's the name of our business, it's like nature station, is uh, to be a bridge, bridge between uh, the street and the church. It's uh, very hard now in the secular country to, to go on the street and invite people to some events, to church or some concerts. But if you have connection with customers uh, and they little trust you, then they listen more and uh, they see that just because you are from church, you want them to bring in the church. Uh, they see that you wish them well, good health. Each year, this store participates in a large vegan festival held in Riga. I have seen how God used the shop to bring some people closer to church. In the last festival, for example, I told our business, our shop, together with Adventist Church, in this place, Adventist Church gives place, and we organize this seminar. Would you be interested? Yes, I would be interested. And we get many contacts. Once people make contact with the church, they are invited to join a small group. This is an important aspect of growth within this community. Small groups uh, can do what uh, big church uh, gatherings can do. Uh, and I believe that we need uh, big worship gatherings and small gatherings in home where people can, can uh, get in some deeper level in, uh, in closer relationships. Zane's marriage was falling apart. She and her husband decided it was best to separate. Feeling overwhelmed, Zane looked online for a church in Riga and found the Adventist church. The members encouraged her to join a small group. The first time she attended, she sat at a table between total strangers, but felt so accepted and loved that after some time, she shared her problems with them and they lovingly offered to pray for her. Over time, she started to understand her husband better and recognized good qualities in him. This group helped her on her journey to forgiveness. After much prayer and Bible study, Zane was baptized. Now her family is back together and they are grateful to the small group that prayed for them. Thanks to the Adventist Church's presence in various forms, others have found community and healing through these small groups. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will create a new urban center of influence to work together with the health food store in Riga. And uh, I envision that if, for example, uh, we would have some place we, where we could, could combine uh, maybe small shops, some small cafe, small place with books and a sofa, a very good atmosphere, also with uh, some advertisements of our seminars and uh, health events, it would be much easier to get people uh, to these events. Please pray for this Urban Center of Influence project in Latvia. Thank you for supporting this special offering. Thank you for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for The Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have a team dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.News for daily news and videos. Until next time, when we will have more news of faith, love, and hope. God bless.